friends welcome to my channel and today as you can see I'm already pre drawn up and I was doing the illustration for this as one of my free coloring color with me exercise and I decided to stop right where I was within the line art and to bring you in on this process but before I get to this let me get my disclaimers out of the way and then we can hop to it of course, before I get started, I do have those disclaimers to get out of the way. I live near a major highway here in the country of Belize, and you will hear those motor vehicles in my background. Where I live, there's also a lot of wild birds. You will definitely hear them today calling, chirping, and crying in the background. And thirdly, I have dogs. I have dogs. My neighbors have dogs. So if anyone comes in this neighborhood, you will hear those dogs, including my own, start barking. And with that, I get back to my regular scheduled program. So... Thanksgiving. What does it mean to you, I should ask? And the reason I frame it that way is because I know in the United States of America, they celebrate their Thanksgiving in November, I think the last Thursday in November, or the second to the last Thursday in November. But here in the country of Belize, I'm not sure if it's true for any other countries, Guys, please let me know in the comments below where you guys, when do you guys celebrate your Thanksgiving? What time of the year do you celebrate your Thanksgiving? And the reason I'm asking that is because here in Belize, we celebrate our Thanksgiving in October. More specifically, mid-October, between the second and third week of October. And we don't call it Thanksgiving. We actually call it Harvest. And the reason why we use the word harvest rather than Thanksgiving is because it's actually the same concept, but because Belize is such a heavily religious country, um, it is our time where we give tribute back to our Lord for the bountifuls that he has blessed us with. So basically the entire concept is, well, I'm from the Methodist faith, so I am a member of the Methodist community and in my church and every church celebrated a little differently but the concept remains the same what we do in the Methodist faith is that between middle October like the second to the third week of October um, the church will organize an event called harvest this is where we take fruits vegetables canned foods whatever products or produce we could find within our home and we present that back to the church. So basically, it's an entire event where we gathered. Sometimes we dress up. Sometimes we dress in our school uniforms. And we brought these produce from our homes. We put them in a little basket. And we march up in the church. We actually march in the church in like a procession. And we present these harvests to our bountifuls or the stuff that we brought from home to the church. So we present it to the church. We say a little verse. Sometimes we say a Bible verse. Sometimes we say a poem. Sometimes we say something that's written for us. And we say a little verse giving thanks for the Lord, to the Lord, sorry, to the Lord for blessing us with this bountiful for the year and for him to give us more bounties and more blessings for the remaining years and for the year to come. Yeah. Having think of this, and having this illustration in front of me, I just remember my favorite Methodist hymn, Praise O, Praise O. If you guys are Methodists in the Caribbean, you know what I mean when I say Praise O, Praise O, all ye kings. Because that is like the favorite hymn we sing when we do harvest. Okay, just to give you a little history into our Thanksgiving, I don't want to be too religious. Like I said, my country is heavily re religious and a lot of our traditional practices is surrounded by religion and our faith. So I don't want to get too much into that. When I was thinking Thanksgiving, I was not only thinking turkey and hams and pilgrimage. I was also going back to my own traditional Thanksgiving, which is the harvest. And one of those illustrations is just to illustrate just that. Here's a little boy. It's actually a boy, so it's not me as a little girl. Here's a little boy who is doing exactly what I'm telling you, um, explaining to you guys he's doing. He's all dressed up in his little tuxedo. And he has his little um, basket here full with fruits that he's going, he's marching now in his little procession. He's marching and presenting this little basket of fruits that he brought from his home to the church. So let me finish this line up and come along with me. Mm 
Mm. Oh man, I can remember as a kid, I was never happy when it comes to harvest because the school I went to was a Methodist school, so we were so had to the school had to participate and it was a Sunday, usually a Sunday. And we had to wake up Sunday morning. And I had a brother, so I had to attend two harvests. So because how we did it in my country is that the boys used to go in the afternoons and the girls go well no, sorry. The boys go in the morning and the girls go in the afternoon. So Every Sunday when I was a kid, I have to get up and go to see my brother's harvest and then come home, get ready, and go to my harvest. And at the time when I was a kid, we were also a member of a second church. It was within the same Methodist faith, but it was um, my father's church. So... One Sunday, we'll go to our school church because it was never on the same day. One Sunday, we'll go to our school church. And then the next Sunday, we have to go to our my participate in my father's harvest. I went to one Methodist school. My brother went to another Methodist school. And then my father went to another Methodist church. So basically, within the month of October... Every Sunday, I have to go to three harvest, which was just wow. So that's why I have my little friend here looking so miserable because I'm just remembering my experience, which was not nice, <laughs> which was okay. It was, I'm not going to say it's not nice, but at the time I was like, got to get up, got to go to harvest. And we do because we do march in a procession. We do have to practice. So usually they will take a week or two to practice and that's for each church so since i went to one methodist school like the first the first two weeks before the harvest i would be practicing and because my me and my brother attended our father's methodist church a week or two before that harvest we had to practice so in the evenings when we were finished from our school we had to go over to my father's methodist church to practice there too so yeah it it got a little daunting as a kid, and that's why I have my little friend looking the way he looks, because he's kind of remembering that experience. Okay, so let me finish this up, and let's talk about this when we're done. Okay guys, I am finished. Um, I will have this provided for you as free line art um, so that you can color as you will, um, download, make small into pictures, do whatever you like with it. But one of the things I should say is I drew it here in this sketchbook. This sketchbook has no covering and um, it doesn't cover but there's nothing drawn on it. And um, what had happened was when I did this, when I went to scan it, the scanning came out all wrong. I mean, it was like not very good at all. I really didn't appreciate it. So I used my light board and I redid it into another sketchbook. And I'm sure if I've shown you this little baby. And so here it is, all fleshed out, my little friend going into harvest I'll just put my barrier behind it so I don't cause any indentation as I color the only thing is I'm trying to figure out whether or not to color it as with coloring pencils or with markers I use markers in the sketchbook before when it came to this illustration um, in the middle is the touch master 
color tone markers just a horrible experience this here is the Cali Art, as you can see. This here one is the Ahuhu markers. Um, I love the colors that it gives me, the variation. It gave me great, especially with the Ahuhus. I, I love that transition, how I was able to blend the two colors. The Cali Art does do blending, too, but maybe it's just my experience with blending. I have done color pencils in here, too. Here is the... One where I did with the Milan Big Lead, the Marco Renault, and the Joseph Hartmut. Um, I have some of these pieces up. Here's another one that I did with color pencils. So this surface does take color pencils and it does take markers. Here's one that I did with the Prisma colors. I'm sure I have done, I've put this up before. This is the October free color with me session that we did. So, yeah, I like this. I really, really do like this. So, yeah. And there's some others. Previews. Color It Me sessions. Basically, this is my workbook. This is where I was doing some kind of stuff when it came to, what do you call the thing? Perspective. I do have a few more pages to work on that. But for this one, it's my little boy harvest, and we're going to color it. So, yeah, tell me what you think. Should I go markers or should I go color pencils? Let the coin decide. See my little coin here? My little dime? I should put it on its head. And I'm going to flip it. Tails! But I didn't decide what head or tails is. So heads we go with markers. And tails we go with color pencils. Hey guys. At this stage, put in the description below what you would like to color this with and then edit that or put underneath that if I chose the one that you thought I should. I guess we're going to go with what should I said it was color pencils, then markers or markers, color pencils. I think it was I have to go back and see. I think I said heads was color pencils. Let me rewind and see what I said. So after doing that rewatch, it is heads, markers, tails, color pencils. Hmm. Anyway, um, I'm going to be using the Caliat markers. And as you can see here in the corner, I have my swatch sheet, my reference sheet. Pull out. I have my markers in front of me. And I'll be looking at these, reference these to color along. Um, I'm thinking that my little friend here is of the darker persuasion. So I'll be making his skin a little dark. And I'm also believing I want to make his suit that he's wearing. I love the color green. I don't know what is it about the color green, but I just love the color green. I know, right? Yeah, that's, I just discovered that about myself. I could never finish something. It's like I see something, I was like, oh, let me correct that before I start begin. And um, I'm thinking that I want to make his suit green, but I think I should stay away from that. Maybe use some kind of gray for his suit and um, his shoes and everything. These fruits, I'm um, thinking to make them be assortments of oranges and apples. But I have to be careful with the brown that I use because I don't want his fruit bowl to clash with his skin tone. So I have to be careful of that. And uh, let's begin. Okay, I am finished. 
Um, this process was very lengthy for two reasons. Reason one, I wanted to incorporate drying time, so I didn't want some of the colors to mix too much. I wanted some sharp edges in some sections. And two, as you can see, I didn't really select the colors, a lot of the colors, at least 60%, at least 80% of the colors of hand what I want. All I knew is that I wanted his his skin to be a certain color and his suit to be a certain color. And that was about it. But I think all in all, I did a great job. When I look at this, you know, I put the apples in his basket and I made that the brightest color. So you directly go to him and it's not too overwhelming. So I made him more stand out than this little foot here. So basically, so you don't directly go to that foot. What color did I use? I see something I want to correct. There's a small thing right there. What's that? That's what I want to correct. So I don't directly go to that foot. I go to this. Okay. And I did use my colliards. I've had these markers for about, I'll say, two, maybe two, three years now. And they're still going strong. They still remain very juicy. Um, and some of these are the colors I use all the time. Like this is double G1, which is warm gray number one. I use that all the time. For skin, I always use tomato brown in Kali Art. And so as you can see, it's still vibrant, still, still juicy. I really appreciate it. I really like it. And guys, tell me what you think in the comments below. Tell me what you think of my little mister marching up for his harvest and um i initially wanted to put some people in the church pews next to him but i didn't want to distract from him marching so yeah let me know what you think in the comments below i really love it like i said you'll be getting this as a free line art so you can color along with me in this color session Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.